Any piece of software you have ever encountered interacts with a user in one way or another. A lot of programs output some form of text to a console, others read their input from files somewhere on your system. Some might want to read your mouse position on screen or send some data across the internet to another device. All of these features are ultimately linked to a single procedure, the system call. Since the next milestone of our journey is a Hello World program, let's briefly discuss the X64 instruction at the core of this procedure. To understand how a system call works, we really only need to understand how functions work. Anytime a function is called within an executable, all necessary parameters are loaded into specific registers or pushed onto the stack in a certain order. This order is known as a calling convention, which is something I'm moving to a separate video for now. We'll deal with it once we tackle proper function calls in the compiler. The important part is that system calls are set up just like function calls, with parameters placed into certain registers. The only difference is that instead of jumping to another point in our code, we send a request to the operating system. One of the parameters we set for this request is a simple integer which the operating system uses to identify the relevant function. Which exact integers we'll need and how we'll get them on Windows is something we'll tackle once everything else is set up. For now, let's start simple and build a small node for the system call instruction itself. The so-called syscall instruction probably is one of the simplest instructions we'll assemble anytime soon. It only consists of a two-byte opcode, which we can easily construct using our legacy opcode node. All we need to do is select the correct escape sequence and enter the opcode as officially documented. We built this node a couple of weeks ago as part of a framework for x64 instructions. I'll link the relevant video down below if anyone is interested or needs to re-watch it. Since the instruction doesn't take any parameters, we can leave the input port disconnected. For now, we'll simply provide the instruction bytes as text to an output port. We'll revisit this in the future once we use a global instruction stream to store our final byte sequence. In the next video, we'll tackle the various move instructions, which allow us to move data between registers and memory locations. We'll also need them for setting up the system call parameters as described earlier. I'll see you there.